I guess I'll listen to some music. Oh, nice song. Ah! You're under arrest! This is totally lame. Why am I under arrest? You dare listen to Spongebob copyrighted music after what you did? Do what, exactly? Destroy the good name of modern Spongebob. You're a legend. The prophecy of Spongebob Square Hate. Right. Are you sure this isn't a dream sequence? In the case that it isn't, you need some medication. On your YouTube channel, I scare. If the judge finds out about this, you'll be ruined for lying to the court about modern Spongebob being less than decent. Unless, of course... What? You got cash? Oh, brother. How about I make you a positive view on a Modern Spongebob episode? No, this intro is cringy enough. Well, screw you. I'm doing it anyway. Hey, ladies and jellyfish, swimmers of all sizes. Welcome back to Ask Your Videos. Today, I'm reviewing one of the Spongebob Season 8 specials, Hello, Bikini Bottom. This episode was the last episode of Season 8, and the last episode earned by Aaron Springer, a writer on Bang Geeks and Choir Boys. And also for the other two, Danny Mike Kelly, a writer on Are You Happy Now? And Sean Shermott, a writer on The Splinter. And also, it's one of my favorite Splinter episodes. You know, this episode deserves some credit. It matters to include all the obstacles that make modern Splinter episodes bad. Patrick is annoying, Squidward gets tortured, Mr. Krabs is cheap, Spongebob is mildly annoying, but it works. Now that I think about it, there are four specials in Season 8. Frozen Face-Off, Squarepants Family Vacation, It's a Spongebob Christmas, and Hello Bikini Bottom. All the good ones, all except Squarepants Family Vacation, all have this factor. They pretend pets that are pat, yours, mine, and mine, and are you happy now never happened. They include Jerky Patrick, Squid Torture, Mr. Krabs' Greed, etc. But you know why this works? Because they get their just desserts. Mr. Krabs gets punished for greed at the end, and is actually amusing because of reason I'll get to in a second. Squid deserved a small hit, or just as a joke like the cactus joke that works, because he is shown as a grump and a giver-upper, or as a joke like the donkeyfish joke. Jerky Patrick either has a legit reason, or it's not that insulting and annoying, like the tire he ate which boosted the conflict which resulted in the song and the solution. By the way, if Mr. Krabs getting punishment wasn't enough for you, guess what? It works because he's ruining characters we have no care for, like Ned and the Needlefish or Colonel Carper. Not Plankton or Squidward, Zeus. Next, I want to point out the two amazing musicals in this episode. It's High Tide Time We Go On Tour and Never Give Up. These are two amazing pieces backed up by motion and great animation. Also, the piece they keep playing in the supermarket and all the other venues is worth repeating. These songs are so great, I literally usually go back and listen to them independently. The meteor shower twist worked and it's actually funny because Squidward and Spongebob don't know. It makes you feel actually good for the characters as they are happy even when it's a lie and it's actually funny. See how you do it Zeus? Excellent. Class, pull out your textbooks to page 919. Story writing. Zeus, get those pencils out of your nose. Ugh. The next thing I should talk about is the comedy. The comedy in this episode is not bad. Like how Mr. Krabs just jumped in and started singing and dancing and twerking. Or how when Colonel Carper says he's thinking, the art piece of thinker is in the mirror. Or how Ned and the Needlefish reacted in the electronics outhouse. The donkeyfish joke was also really funny. Now, as always, let's talk about the negatives. I think Mr. Krabs shouldn't have won at the end. It was sweet and nice with the song, everyone's in tears. And Mr. Krabs, the punished antagonist, won. And not only won, but used SpongeBob's college earnings for Gary to buy the Krusty Krab, which he mistakenly sold and doesn't deserve to get again. What's the point if the Krusty Krab is just going to show up in the next episode? Also, the too loud joke was really annoying and got tedious eventually. But I don't understand. He's supposed to say too loud when SpongeBob and Squidward are silent and awkwardly staring at the guy. But every time he yells it, SpongeBob and Squidward are either putting their instruments on the ground, or their Spongebob shoes squeak. Also, at the middle, as they go from the supermarket to the concert and all that, it was a tad bit slow, and they talk so slowly and easy. I, I personally like easy episodes, but Spongebob episodes are supposed to be crazy and comedic. Any more negatives? Nope. That's it. In such an artistic episode, both script-wise, storyboard-wise, music-wise, and animation-wise, there's no room for mistakes, which you don't make too many of. 
This episode is awesome. I would give it a 10 out of 10. It deserved to be the big final episode of Season 8, and Aaron Springer should be proud to leave on such a high note. Until like 70 years from now, when he is dead, if Spongebob still isn't going on then, talk about a stupid idea, he might live a good death. Let's hope Nickelodeon won't be on that long to make him roll in his grave, and me too. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and check out uh, more, and uh, check out my website, DeviantArt and Second Channel. Peace out, ladies and jellyfish.